Hi folks, this is Mike Zlatnik, Big Mike. And today's discussion is going to focus on investing in retail. We're going to compare and contrast open air shopping plazas versus enclosed malls. But we, before we dive into that, usual disclaimer, this is purely for informational educational purposes. No advice is given, no solicitation of any kind. Before making any investment decisions, consult with your attorney and CPA professional. So let's chat a little bit about retail in general and compare and contrast open air shopping plazas and enclosed malls. So we're recording this in early June, 2023, while we're living in the post COVID world. And in a post COVID world, there's been a lot of recovery and a lot of strength in the open air shopping plazas versus some of the challenges in enclosed malls. And the trend is pretty old. The trend has been around since e-commerce, the Amazon effect has taken over and has been rapid growth in e-commerce and a, a general perception that retail is a dying dinosaur. So the purpose of this video is just to let folks see a little bit different color on this asset class. Mm -hmm. Now, the enclosed malls, many malls have died or dying, and it happened before COVID and COVID further damaged and destroyed some of these malls. So enclosed malls is not an asset class that by itself is attractive at all. It is certainly has a same connotation and same feeling as some of the dying office space in the post-COVID world that folks just don't want to go there. So we don't know whether the office will ever come back to where it was pre-COVID, but many folks just don't want to go to the malls. They get e-commerce deliveries and they prefer to avoid going to these old shopping malls. However, uh, open-air shopping plazas, service-oriented retail, experiential retail continues to do well, and the demand for that asset class has been pretty strong. As people have experienced COVID shutdowns, and many just want to come out, enjoy life. And, and also supply for the retail has been very, very limited, simply because the asset class has not been terribly liked, and the very limited supply, very limited construction of retail space over the last 10 plus years and continuous growth and the need of pure e-commerce retailers to have physical presence. So many stores that were e-commerce stores have decided to become a combination of e-commerce on a website, mobile app, plus physical presence. It has worked It's something that's been penetrating into the retail. And this is almost the profitable business for many of these e-commerce retailers is to have the stores, not pure e-commerce delivery. So as a combination, they work really well. So the demand for retail space has actually been resilient and the rates have been rising. Now, we don't know what's going to happen on a forward basis. What happens during a recession, typically demand for retail softens. So all that said, in general, open air, shopping plazas have done relatively well with high quality retail tenants, many service oriented tenants. The reason I mentioned this is that I wanted to get a little bit of clarification for, in, for folks to understand that retail is a broad term used for different types of shopping plazas versus malls. The old malls, many of them need to be redeveloped. So we, we've seen old Sears boxes, big, retailer boxes being redeveloped into self-storage. Some malls are being redeveloped into apartments. Some malls are being redeveloped into some kind of industrial use, big warehouse spaces, or the lights off supermarkets that actually just work as distribution centers. So that some of this has taken place. There's other uses for the malls other than retail. So repurpose, reposition, redevelopment of those malls can make great economic sense but they don't make sense as retail shopping centers. But open air shopping plazas have done substantially well. Of course, all real estate is local. There are different deals, different opportunities, different performance and different assets, but it's something that has actually seen growth in rents, demand, lower vacancy as the result of limited supply and strong demand growth. So this is something for folks to keep in mind and to understand the difference. Of course, during recessions, certain retailers suffer. For example, high-end retailers generally don't do well. And discounters, Dollar General, 
Costco's of the world, Walmart's of the world, they do well. And then there are plenty of other discount-oriented retailers and service-oriented retail that does well during an economic downturn. Something to keep in mind that we as humans are not ready to be locked in our homes, apartments, and live in a box. We experienced that during the COVID and post-COVID world. We want to come out. We want to live life. So especially service-oriented retail has been in good demand. Hair salons, nail salons, restaurants, gyms, doctor, dentists, and many other service-oriented businesses have done well, and they continue to do well, and they'll continue to be uh, strong considerations. There are also many great national tenants. I'll give you an example, like Starbucks. If you can put a Starbucks, that type of a tenant is a phenomenal tenant. The credit quality is, is great, and folks want to get their coffee or their cappuccino or their um, <laughs> one of these fancy new drinks. So the point is still the same, that there are plenty of businesses that continue to do really well, and the retail sector continues to be a very attractive investment opportunity. So let me just talk a little bit about how retail is attractive. Many of these retail shopping plazas sit in great real estate. And then they trade, they sell at the cap rates substantially higher than other parts of real estate. So you can go and invest in a shopping plaza with the cap rates in the seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half percent range, high cap rates, and they generally very strong cash and cash returns, even in the age of high interest rates. So as rates have gone up with Fed pushing rates. Too fast and too furious. You've heard me talk about that. Retail is still generating cash flow. It's one of the few asset classes that has a positive spread between the cap rate on the property that is acquired at and the interest rate on a mortgage. Many other asset classes are not looking as attractive as a result of these high interest rates because they have a negative spread between the cap rates that they trade at and then the interest rates that are available in mortgages. For example, a shopping plaza may have a cap rate of, say, for sake of the simplicity, 7.5% cap rate, and a mortgage rate of 6.5%. That is a positive spread of 100 basis points or 1% between the cap rate and the interest rate. And that means that for every dollar borrowed, it generates positive leverage, increasing the cash flow on the deal. Now, compare and contrast that to multifamily or self-storage. And let's just say multifamily self-storage for the sake of a similar comparison is trading now at 5.5% cap rate. So 5.5% cap rate and a mortgage rate of 6.5%. It's a negative 100 basis point spread or negative 1% between the cap rate and the interest rate. All, all that means is that for every dollar borrowed, the cash flow on the deal weakens. So it's kind of like this. As leverage increases on multifamily storage deals, the cash flow gets worse. As leverage increases on retail shopping plazas, the cash flow, cash and cash returning increases. So again, this is not, I'm not advocating shopping plazas are better than self-storage or they're better than multifamily. They're very different. It's a different experience. It's a consideration for folks who are used to investing in multifamily deals or self-storage deals. Something to think about, is it something that could fit in uh, individual portfolio based on your own level of risk or war tolerance and obviously discussion with your CPA and attorney and financial planner, whether it makes sense for you. But just something to keep in mind that open air shopping retail asset class is still an attractive asset class, likely going to be attractive for many years. And many of these shopping plazas live and sit in great locations. And in real estate, location is as critical as anything else. So something to think about. I just wanted to provide a little bit of clarification on the asset class so it is not viewed with tremendous stigma. We certainly have invested into many real open-air retail deals, shopping plazas. We appreciate what that asset class provides in the form of cash flow, from a form of downside protection. Many of these deals, by the way, get financed with low leverage. And low leverage means lower risk. So these deals quite often present pretty predictable income streams 
and provide pretty good downside protection while they maintain very reliable base of tenants. One thing really, really important and uh, one of the big advantages of some of these open air shopping plazas deals is that they have great tenant base. And then the leases are typically signed for long term. So a 10 year lease or 15 year lease could provide predictability of income, not only predictability of income, many of the shopping plazas trade on triple net lease. So as taxes increase, as insurance increase, as maintenance costs increase, they all get passed through to tenants to pay a greater share of those expenses, while the landlord enjoys higher predictability of the cash flow because of these triple net leases. Compare and contrast that to gross lease leases in multifamily or storage. The gross lease simply means landlord pays for all the expenses, tenant just pays the gross rent. Now, of course, tenant may turn on the utilities and so on and so forth. But, but in general, as taxes go up, as insurance goes up, the rents don't pick up that additional increase in self-storage or with multifamily. Now, those asset classes operate differently and they have their own beauties. But one of the be best beauties of retail is triple net leases. And I'll have another video describing what a triple net leases mean. But in general, very high level, means that all expenses are passed to the tenant. Taxes, insurance, maintenance, some other uh, categories as well. And that creates the beauty for the landlords in the shopping plazas that they are, have predictable multi-year leases that is generate strong cash flow and have high quality tenants. And, and as a result, the valuation of these assets is a lot more predictable than some of the more volatile asset classes. As I mentioned, storage could be very successful, could be great investment, but the, the, the rents are monthly. If for some reason somebody builds a, a competitive storage right across the street and the rents drop, the performance of the asset could drop. Now, it doesn't happen all the time or often, but it can happen. So monthly rents, like a self-storage, they work really well when the rent's going up. But if somehow rents start retreating, monthly rents could be a disadvantage versus a long-term rent or a lease in a shopping plaza. Again, this is just for compare and contrast some of these asset classes, just so folks can understand the difference and appreciate that there are different strategies, different asset classes, and we love to invest into all of the above storage, multifamily, shopping plazas, and so on and so forth. There are different opportunities in each asset class, obviously deal by deal, but there's a beauty in some of the kind of ugly duckling could be a beautiful swan when it grows up. I hope this was helpful. Appreciate your time and attention. Until the next time, thank you.